Hey, welcome back to the Focus Show. What you focus on expands. And this is episode number 39 already. With me, two incredible experts from Chile and Mario, where are you from? I'm from Germany, Regensburg, Germany. Ah, Chile and Germany and Switzerland. So welcome. This, this uh, show today is about relationships. So in relationships, more than anything, what you focus on expands. If you're focusing on all the things that don't work in your relationships, it can be business, intimate, partners, kids, whatever relationships, then, of course, that will expand. And if you focus on the bright side, that will expand. So, Mario, can you quickly introduce yourself, please? Yes. Uh, thank you very much, Natalie. Well, I'm Mario. Uh, for over 16 years, I've been working as an expert for relationships, communication, and um, I, do, I do it uh, uh, in whole Europe in three languages, German, English, and Spanish. Wow. And I work with individuals, uh, with teams, and with companies. And we try to get good relationships in order to be more effective, to have more fun in life, and, you know, stuff like that. Be effective and have more fun. Two things that are not necessarily <laughs> going hand in hand. But I think, you know, because it's always about emotions. And if you have a relationship uh, which gives you good emotion and mm -hmm. you give good emotion back, then it brings you in a state where you can perform better. And so it makes you more effective from my point of view. Yeah, totally agree. Totally agree. Interesting. So what are you going to share with us today, Mario? Uh, well, I'm going to share with you some, uh, I, I developed a system which is based on emotional intelligence. And uh, so I took from several sectors of knowledge and uh, science, I took some golden nuggets and uh, brought them into a system with a lot of pictures. And so I'm going to give you one or the other picture and, and metaphor today. Okay. Does that have a, have a name, the system? Uh, I call it the emotional reality system because, as I told you before, uh, for me in life, it's always about emotions. Everything we do is um, we try to get good emotions and we try to avoid bad emotions. And so uh, that's why it's called the emotional reality because you can design your own emotional reality and the emotional reality of your partner in a relationship as well. Wow, I love that analogy. How about you, Michelle? Emotional reality system. Yeah. <laughs> I'm loving the sound of it. I'm so excited that Mario is on the call because he's without a doubt more of a relationship expert than I am. So <laughs> I'm here to learn and that's great. Um, I am based in Chile, but my accent uh, puts me in South Africa. I'm originally from South Africa and I've been here now for seven years. And I'm a leadership coach, I'm a coach tutor, and I'm a teacher of improvised acting, which I'm very excited to say we've now bought online, and that's a lot of fun. Um, perhaps the, the, most, uh, the most area of expertise I have in relationship is relationship with self. And so maybe I will talk a little bit about that today, but I'm thrilled to be in Mario's company because I'm very excited to hear more about the emotional reality system. Nice, nice. Well, I think, where does it all start, the relationships? With self. Yeah, exactly. You don't, you don't have a good relationship with yourself. I don't know if you're going to be able to create any other good relationships outside of yourself. I totally agree with you, Michelle, because... Uh, I also think that you should have a good relationship to yourself. And uh, if you have it, uh, then you can have good relationships in the outside. And there's a good saying. It's a Native American saying. They say, if you don't have enemy, uh, if you don't have any enemy inside, then you don't have any enemy outside. And so therefore, I think it's very important to start with yourself. Mm, yeah, and again, we're back to the focus theme. Enemy inside, enemy outside. You know, you're focusing on the enemy, you're going to have some enemy. Yes, yeah, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> wow, interesting discussion today. And we were talking with Michelle before. She said, well, you know, it's not really a relationship that I'm expertising in. She's an expertise, expert in many, many different things. And uh, it's interesting that um, this is coming together as a holistic thing again, you know, starting with self, focusing on self, focusing on relationships, and then uh, creating some reality in and outside of yourself. 
Nice. Yes, exactly. So um, I, the system that I was talking about has four pillars and uh, the first pillar starts with yourself. So it's the self-consciousness. You should know um, who you are, uh, how you feel, why do you feel the way you feel, you know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And the second pillar is uh, the self-regulation or the self-management because um, being happy, being joyful is a skill. It's not induced from outside. You can do it uh, internally. So mm -hmm. it's uh, your own responsibility. And then the third pillar, it goes to the other person. Now okay, okay, no, hold on. <laughs> no. So the first one is self, who you are. Yes. And the second one is learning to be, learning to be happy. Uh, that the first one is self-consciousness, to, so to to have um, to know who you are, to really know yourself, and yes. the second pillar is the the way you manage yourself, the, how uh, you manage your emotional states, uh, self-management. Okay. Self-management in terms of emotion. Yes, for example, in terms of emotion, and uh, and it all goes with mindset because uh, everything. Uh, I guess starts with mindset, and so um, yeah, it starts inside. So those are the first two pillars that have to do with yourself. Okay. Okay. Should I go on, or Michelle, yes, do you want now, to ask something? Now it's clear. How about you, Michelle? Any questions from you? No, I'm interested to hear the second two pillars, the last two pillars. Okay. Go ahead, Mario. Okay. So the second two pillars. Now we're going on the outside. And now the third pillar is really reading somebody else uh, through body language, through tone of voice, through language the person uses, um, topics she or, or he addresses or avoids. And then you uh, get a, yeah, at least, um, yeah, you can have a hypothesis how this person feels or... or um, yeah, the way, yeah, way, way she feels. And then uh, the fourth, it's okay, like... Okay, so, so uh, hold on, let me rephrase. So you're doing like a, a representation of what you're perceiving. Uh, yes, I mean, you. everybody reads body language, tone of voice right. and so on, but you, you should do it consciously. So in mm -hmm. order to be able to feel into somebody, so to, to, be, um, uh, to have empathy with this person, okay? And then the fourth pillar would be designing interactions, which would be just not to let an interaction happen, uh, but to design it intentionally. And those are the four pillars of the emotional reality system. Okay. So, Michelle, what, what do you think? What can you add? Maybe an interesting, interesting precept. Yes, go ahead, Michelle. Mm. While you were talking, actually, um, what came to my mind um, amongst what you were saying is how we can sabotage relationships or the games we play in relationships. So two of uh, the models that I use in coaching came to mind. One is the transactional analysis, mm -hmm. the treating each other as adult to adult and not parent to child. And the other one that came to mind is the Kaufman's drama triangle. So being the, the hero or the perpetrator, uh, the persecutor, that triangle, these games that we subconsciously play with one another um, to sabotage each other. So does your system address those, Mario? Uh, in a certain way, yes. Uh, it's more that uh, we, all people have two states that we are in, basically. And so one is, <clears throat> I always call it the normal state, which you are in if you are... Uh, if, you, if you're not afraid, if you are in psychological health, okay? Mm -hmm. So then you are joyful, you're playful, you're open, you're creative, you know, stuff like that. And then whenever you, uh, there is something that uh, gives you fear or that, that stresses you, mm -hmm. then you switch into, I call it like an alert mode or so. And then we... Uh, a program runs and there are five mechanisms that come uh, or that people um, use in, in, in this alert mode. Mm -hmm. So sh should I go on or do you have a question? Yes. Uh, yeah, very good. Thank you. So it's kind of like 
either joyful, happy, at peace. I also call this the true self when you're yourself, you're present, you're yes. in, you're you're in flow. Yes. And the other one is the opposite, which is a little bit ego self. That's what I call it. I mean, look, there's so many different words for it. Ego self is fearful and anxious and, and stressed and kind of like focusing on the outside and focusing on what's happening. Yeah. Being controlled rather than being in control. Those type of things, yes. Yes, and when you are in this state that you just mentioned, uh, Natalie, then uh, there are five mechanisms which come from our ancient ancestors. Yeah, and, five and flight. Yes, but it's five. Uh, it's First one is freeze. So imagine you walk uh, along a field and all of a sudden there comes a tiger. So the first one is to freeze. Yeah. Not very happy. <laughs> tigers go and look for movement. Predators look for movement, so you freeze. <laughs> and you can also see it in uh, when you're in a meeting. So the boss says, hey, I need someone of you who can do uh, this or this task. People freeze. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Michelle is doing the, uh, the pantomime. <laughs> Did you see that once? <laughs> oh, yeah, many times. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. Or maybe what is funny at a party, you know, everything is funny, everybody is, is chatting. All of a sudden, somebody tells a bad joke. So what happens? Everybody <laughs> Did he just say that? <laughs> yeah. And so what do you do with that, with the freeze and the state? I mean, I mean okay, there are four more, but I, before I may address them or not, uh, I, I just I go and I look for this, you know, because... If I see this, for example, in my spouse, or I see this mm -hmm. with a colleague, or I see this in my job with a coaching client or uh, somebody else, then I know, okay, this person is now in alert mode. It's not, mm -hmm. uh, feels not comfortable. So right. I try to make them feel comfortable. So to get out of this alert mode. So you're looking for signs of these five or six, you said? Five. Five, five uh, different modes. Yes. Or Yes. So first one, I, I will just, I won't explain them all. Uh, first one is freeze. Second one is flight. The third mm -hmm. one is appeasement. The fourth one mm -hmm. is fight. And the sixth mm -hmm. one is play dead. <laughs> right. Appeasement? Uh, uh, please people? Yeah, no, to, to appease them. So if they uh, are like a threat to you, say, hey, everything's okay, stay cool, you know? So which this would be appeasement. And the last one, uh, the next one would then be fight. And the last one would be play that. And so you, I, when I interact with people, I look for, for those five mechanisms and I see whether they are comfortable with me or uncomfortable. And um, so we had it first. I have to make myself comfortable. And now in a relationship, I think it's good to be able to make somebody else comfortable to be with you. Mm. Interesting concepts. So you said freeze, fight, appeasement, flight, and play dead. Uh, yes, yes. Okay, let me put those up on the screen. Okay. Mm. Interesting. So you just analyze, you see where they're at, and then depending on where they're at, you can uh, have a strategy to help them get out of it. Yes, and, and you have to really, what's very, very important from my point of view is really listening. And so there are two mm. concepts to listen in order to make a good relationship. It's New four concepts, wow. <laughs> I know, the, the system is full of concepts. So one is uh, listen to connect, so when somebody is talking, you try to find the, the stuff that you can connect with and to find similarities. Or the other one is listen to reject, which means that I also I only look for stuff that I can make you wrong. You know, yeah. oh, no, this is not wrong. This is not right. This is different. Okay. okay. And so those are two listening concepts. Right, right, right. So which one is more resourceful? <laughs> Listen to connect. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's dial in with our audience and see if they have any questions. Yes. And all these precepts and concepts that uh, Mario shared with us, do you have any questions or any any feedback or anything you want to say about that? Please put it in the comments or, um, yeah, directly address Mario with the, with the questions because I think it's very important. Relationships is what drives us. Yes. Any, it doesn't really matter whether business or not. Yes, you're right. 
Because uh, when you think about the last time that you were really truly happy and the last really joyous moment, it always involves other people. Yes. Um, and I, I think that uh, to be successful in life, or uh, success is always based on interpersonal success. Because mm -hmm. if you're alone, you cannot be successful, really. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. How much fun is it to be successful by yourself? <laughs> I, I mean, okay, there might be some situations that you can be successful with yourself, but in general speaking, yes. or generally speaking, you need other people to be successful. And therefore, yes. you need interpersonal success to be successful in life. Very true. Mm -hmm. I recently read something interesting in a book. It said that when we, the reason why we share when we had a good experience or a nice weekend or a movie or anything is because it releases endorphins in our body that are similar to chocolate. So telling about our last weekend releases the same kind of endorphins as if I was to eat a, a bar of chocolate. Yes. And it's more healthy probably. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, because you relive it again and then... Uh, yes. Here we have this emotion part. You relive the emotion again. And this is what we are longing for, the good emotions. Yes, yes, very true. All right, wow. You're full of wisdom, Mario. We could probably go on for three hours. <laughs> As you like. I have a question. Go ahead. I have a question, Mario. Or maybe it's to both of you. Where, what is the role that trust plays? Very good. Do you want to answer, Natalie, or should I? <laughs> Trust. Well, my point of view is well, based on my experience. It's the basic foundation of everything, especially relationships, business, intimate, any any kind of. If you don't trust someone, then you're gonna always hold back. It's not gonna be. What? Why do you ask the question? Is that just something that came to mind, or? And um, because it feels to me, I've done some work with a colleague in the space of trust. But it feels to me that this particular year, this crazy 2020 that we're living in, we, all our trust has been smashed, right? Mm -hmm. So we, we're threatened, we have to work from home, there is a lot of remote leadership, people are um, in various uh, climate surveys, people are claiming that trust is the issue that is most broken at the moment. So does a leader trust his people that they're doing their job even though they can't be seen? Um, um, so I'm curious about how we are managing relationships in a in a time where trust is a little bit vulnerable for us all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thank you. What do you have to say about that, Mario? Uh, a very good question. Uh, I think trust is uh, the foundation for a good relationship, and you have to really uh, work on trust. Okay, and so. Um, I have another metaphor, which is called the, the relationship bank account. Okay, so Michelle, I saw you now for the first time, maybe 10 minutes ago or so. And so from now on, we started our relationship bank account. And now uh, the currency of the bank account between us is uh, emotions. So do I trigger good emotions in you? Then my credit goes up. <laughs> Do I trigger negative emotions? My credit goes down. And if I deal with you and I trigger good emotions, you trigger good emotions with me, then the credit goes up, 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 up. And the result of it, from my point of view, is trust. Okay? And so uh, I think it's very, very important to to work on a relationship because sometimes we might do something that hurts somebody else uh, which induces negative emotions, then my credit goes down. Yeah? So I have to work on it so that my credit goes up again and to rebuild the trust. Lots of good emotions, like massages and all kinds of good stuff. <laughs> Annie Callis, welcome. She's also a relationship expert from, um, from uh, Australia. And uh, she has a question. She says, do I trust myself? Do I trust my own intuition? Uh, or he, she says, the question is, do I trust myself? Do I trust my own intuition? We know our answers. However, our minds talk us out of it. Yes. Very okay. Would you like to say anything? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so I, I think that's a beautiful question that Annie's asked or presenting. I guess that's the basis of it, right? We were talking about the relationship with self being the primary relationship. And so that trust 
as Annie is so rightly saying, is pointed back toward us. Do I trust myself in this situation? Do I trust uh, my resources and my tools and my emotions? Yes. Loving that. Yeah. This, this puts us back to base one, what we where we started. Relationship with self. So anything, any precepts or any, any concepts that you would like to share with us, Michelle? And I, I think it would be quite fun just to touch on this because Mario was talking about empathy. One of the things we do in improv and why I'm enjoying improv online so much, and for those who don't know, it's improvised acting. We make everything up spontaneously. One of the things I love about it online is that we can change our names so rapidly now with the technology. So what we do in improv is we have everybody on screen to change their names to some imagined person. Mm -hmm. And I'm quite insistent that it's nobody that we know because improv is not about um, mockery or imitation. It's about imagination. So we, if you're a woman, you can change your name to a guy. You can become Arabic. You can name yourself somebody from Africa. And then I invite you to step into that name as a real form of empathy. And I ask the players questions. So if Mario renames himself to Susie K, I might ask Mario, where are you from? Tell me about your kids. Tell me about your spouse. And invite people to create a whole backstory nice. for this new person that they've named themselves. So it's really stepping into somebody else's shoes and trying to imagine what a life completely different to yours would be. Nice. nice. Love that. Nice. Can I steal that for one of my next seminars? <laughs> <laughs> for sure. For sure. I'll give full credit to you. <laughs> Andreas Hadje has another uh, welcome. And he has another question. He says, doing small talk increases my bank account. Do you suggest to train small talk then? <laughs> That's a, that's a provocative question. That goes to you, Mario. <laughs> okay, but, but I didn't get it right. Can, could you repeat it? He's asking, because you said that uh, evoking good emotions is going to increase your bank account. So he's think, he's, he puts it um, in perspective of small talk. So he says, so doing small talk increases my bank account? Question. Do you suggest to train small talk? Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, small talk for me has the... The good part that, you know, we have uh, one, our brain, the, the main task of our brain is to keep us alive, okay? And so we have a default setting in our brain, which is to think negatively, okay? And so if I see somebody and I don't know anything about him or her, then I go into this negative thinking and I think negatively about this person. And so uh, I can make you an example. For example, you go um, 50 or, or whatever, the, you go the, the right velocity in your city, you are buckled up, yeah, it's night, and all of a sudden the police stops you. So what do you think? <laughs> yeah, right, free mode. Free, yeah. <laughs> so in, immediately you start thinking, uh, did I go too fast? Did I oversee any traffic signs and so on? So this is this negative thinking mode. And we have this with people too. And so small talk for me is so that somebody can um, yeah, feel that I'm not a threat to him or her. Mm -hmm. And this also uh, gives good emotions. And therefore, it also pays into the relationship bank account. Nicely put. Yeah, and I think there's a time and place for small talk. Yes. If you are only doing small talk all day in and day out, then I don't know, then it's going to be very shallow. <laughs> yeah. 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 May I offer another word for small talk? Sure. If we change the word from small talk to rapport, to building rapport with somebody. Nice. Which certainly in my work, I work only virtually, and with new clients, I need to create rapport within the first few minutes I need to be able to uh, set the stage for trust. So mm. I reconsider small talk as being rapport building. Yes. It's one way for us, and it is the emotional bank account, but it's a way for us to build rapport, get into sync. Yes. Very nice. Thank you. 
and and you make yourself uh, like uh, touchable and judgeable so that yes. other people can uh, know where to put you okay and mm -hmm. then this eases their mind and puts them back into uh, comfort and this is uh, then they open up and then they are open for good conversation and for maybe for more deep conversation yes very nice very true. And it's a what? cultural Ooh. thing, right? Mm. It's a cultural thing. Here in Latin America, if you don't do small talk, you are not relating. If I don't ask you first how your mom is and how your family is, then I'm not relating to you. That's mm. part of the context in which we then start talking about business or the important stuff. But that upfront piece is very important. Yeah. And I've learned the hard way because in my culture, we don't do that small talk thing. But here, if you start a meeting, you've got to start off asking about family and, um, you know, the small things before you can launch right. into business conversation. Mm. Yes. You know, you know, Michelle, I'm, I'm a Spanish guy. I live in Germany, but I, I'm a Spanish guy. And therefore, I can totally agree with you whenever right. I go to, uh, to see my family or I go to Spain. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a cultural thing. Yeah? And there, yes. you need it 100% with Latin people. Right. Thank you, Maria. That's that's true. Yes, it's a cultural thing. I I, I might I want to add something else too. So when you're doing small talk or building report, I think the key is to be sincerely interested. Mm. If I'm asking you, hey Michelle, how's your mom doing? You know, and then I look the other way and I don't even listen, and I'm like checking my phone, and then it's going to be doing absolutely nothing. Yes. When you show that you're interested, sincerely interested in the answer then I think that will make a difference. Yeah. Yes. People feel if you're interested in them. Yeah, and, yeah, they uh, do. This is also a, um, a subconscious level, you know, that if um, that, that people feel your emotions or emotions yeah. are contagious. Yeah. And if you yeah. go there and you're bored by this person and say, hey, how are you doing? Uh, how's your mom? Then he or she feels it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. They feel it and they, they know. And uh, that's when it's real small talk, when it's really, you know, you're just asking for the sake of filling the void of, you know, not saying anything, you know, you have to say something. Yeah, right. So back to uh, the self, Michelle. I think we kind of rudely interrupted you. <laughs> Sorry about that with the question. So you said start with the, um, where were we? With self? Yes. Oh, with the impromptu, right? The, the, you were sharing that uh, that um, that uh, game or whatever you want to call it that you're doing, ah, right. where they're going yeah. into somebody else's persona. Well, you know, improvisation is all about relationship. That's where the story develops is from the relationship between the characters. So we have to immediately imagine a relationship between people. We have to imagine needs and wants between people. Um, so it's a really nice way of expanding your own internal repertoire of what you can feel. Um, to Mario's point about the different emotions, I will put in a chat box, for example, the mad, glad, sad, afraid. Tell people to choose an emotion and not tell us, and then to you know act out that emotion and let us guess what they were expressing. Mm -hmm. And and suggest that we can change those emotions. So it's just a choice. I can choose now to be in fear and I can choose in the next scene to be in joy. And, I'm, and when I build that muscle that I can do that regularly, then in my own life I can switch. Great. Yeah. Very true. Yes. Very true. It's also true for when you're on stage and you have a range of emotions that you can pull out of the chest the drawer a little bit in order to get to a point that you need to make. That's also very helpful. So I think that is a good training also for people speaking on stages. Yes. Very interesting conversation. Wow. <laughs> Who would have thought that? <laughs> All right. So if you have any final questions, we're going to wrap this up soon. Then please put them in the comments. Any final words that you two would like to share with our audience? Um, Michelle, you want to go first? Uh, yes, let me go back to where I started, which was the relationship with self. Um, I've had a really interesting relationship with self this year because we've, um, I am alone at the moment, living alone, and I've really had to um, self-accept. 
in a way that, that often we can distract ourselves with the busyness of life and we don't have to look at ourselves so closely in the mirror. And part of that self-accepting is, um, yes, I can change my emotional state and I can come into joy and I can also be okay with all my flaws. When I watch myself do something out of character, I can forgive. Um, you know, that we're, we're so flawed as humans. So it sounds great to be in that perfect where I can choose my perfect emotion and my perfect joy and stay there. But I fall and stumble and to say that's okay and I, I'm still loving myself regardless of when I'm not, you know, presenting in the best possible way. Yes. Annie understands, she says. Yes, oh, I know that yes, one. I know that one. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so, so you're saying it all starts with self-acceptance. Yeah, self-acceptance in all our... I, I'm, um, sometimes I watch myself knee-jerk, what we say in English, I do a knee-jerk. And um, I'm, thanks to the year, thanks to hanging out with myself so much, I've learned to like be, oh, look at me, that was so interesting, I knee-jerked, without giving myself a hard time, you know, being in a, in a, a loving relationship with myself even when I blow it. What is a knee jerk? A knee jerk. Oh, I'm, I'm, for some reason I'm angry at you, Natalie, and I shout at you, or I knee jerk at you, or I, I do something that, that I wouldn't want to because I'm knee jerking. So it's like, um, does that, does that come from the same way? when the duck, the duck that hits your knee in the, you know, is it for me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. How do you spell that? Knee jerk or knee jerk yeah. or knee jerk? Jerk. J-E-R-K. Jerk. Oh, jerk. Ah, okay. My, my knee jerk. Knee jerk, you know. <laughs> knee jerking. Ah, so knee jerking is kind of like, you know, out of the blue. You're just... Yeah, like when I surprise myself by my own bad behavior. But <laughs> then I can, and then I can forgive myself and go, that's okay. That's okay. Just. Um, you know, and maintain that relationship with self in a way that I'm not giving myself a hard time, but just saying that's okay. Okay, forget, forgiving me, jerking. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right, so that will be the word of the week for Michelle. <laughs> Forgive your own me, jerking. <laughs> me, jerk. Oh, thank you. For, yeah, I mean, I mispronounced it, misspelled it. Okay, there you go. All right. That's with self-acceptance and forgive your own knee-jerking. Nice. Thank you for sharing this. Yes, I will remember that. <laughs> Mich Michelle, I, I like that a lot. Uh, your concept of the self-love, I would call it, because it's very, very important because we have different inner parts in us and they're all part of us. And sometimes we suppress one part because the other part says, for example, you have to be perfect all the time. You have to... Mm. Yeah, you have to be good all the time and all this, but we have everything in us. So it's like yin and yang. And sometimes yeah. we suppress one part and it's good to give this suppressed part a hand and to say, hey, this is also part of me and it's okay that uh, this part is here. And then I can consciously maybe, I always imagine this like uh, there are several characters in me who give me advice okay mm -hmm. and so i can lower the voice of one and i can uh, uh, put the volume of the other one up so that they are getting in balance again and so self-love is very important for that okay nice so you would lower the voice of your inner devil and uh, raise the voice of your inner angel <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or something <laughs> like it okay is that what you would like me to put up on the screen as your final uh, my, my final um, word or suggestion for the people would be uh, because we live like uh, neuroscience says that 80 to 90 percent we live in autopilot or we are on autopilot and to get out of the autopilot and do things more consciously uh, sometimes um, for example in a relationship you you have a colleague and you always end up in a fight with him or her this is because you're in your program, in your autopilot. And mm -hmm. there I would suggest to maybe step back, try to get out of the autopilot and do something differently in a conscious way mm -hmm. and then see what the outcome is, whether the outcome is right. uh, different or not. Nice. Do a pattern interrupt yeah. <laughs> with yourself. Slap yourself across the face <laughs> and say, stop. <laughs> 
Nice. Thank you very much. Very super helpful. And this was a very ambiguous, interesting conversation between the two of us, or the three of us. Um, thank you very much for contributing. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank for you very the much. Any final questions? You're probably not going to type that fast. Otherwise, we're going to wrap this up. I'll see you again next week. And uh, yeah, it was was fun. Yes. And uh, once again, thank you. Thank you so much for coming. Yeah. Thank you. Thank bye you. bye. Bye. Have a nice afternoon.